to another video as the AFCON may be over for 16 and a lot of the big teams. There are still eight teams absolutely buzzing that absolutely cannot wait for the quarterfinals of the Africa Cup of Nations. That's right, there's still a tournament going on, guys. I know it feels weird with Algeria being out of the competition. Eight teams vying to be in the competition. And how about this? None of these eight sides were in the quarterfinals at the previous edition. AFCON 2021 had eight different nations to the AFCON 2023 lineup, um, none of which had Algeria, but we'll gloss over that. And what a story for these countries, a lot of countries that people didn't predict to be at this stage. It's a wide open AFCON, and for me, I know the hosts are there, but at this point, and with this many shocks, any team can win it. Any of these eight teams could quite conceivably and unbelievably be crowned champions of Africa in two weeks' time in Abidjan. How did we get here? What a moment. In fact, I think four of these nations have never even won it before, ever. So we could have a new champion crowned. It could be Mali for the first time. It could be Cape Verde for the first time. Imagine Angola or Guinea winning their first AFCON title. But of course, Nigeria, South Africa, DR Congo and Ivory Coast will be wanting to add to their trophy cabinet. So someone's going to win. No North African teams in the last eight. It's been a while since that has happened. So I'm going to look at the four matchups today and you can let me know in the comments who you think is going to win. I'm going to say who I think is going to win each tie. But let's be honest, anything can happen. Kicking off this video with Nigeria against Angola. It feels very weird that Angola are in the quarterfinal stage. They are in pot four, um, put into group D. And I've said for a while on here, I like what Angola are building. I like the players from Petro Luanda. I like the players they've got born in Portugal that have come into the side. But the first 45 minutes of their AFCON campaign, Algeria should have been three or four nil up against them. And I'm not just being biased. We blitzed them. We outplayed them. We had the disallowed goal with Baghdad Bonaja. And then after that, Angola have had a really good tournament. Mabalulu has been one of the revelations of this competition. His side foot finish in the last 16 against Namibia was one of the goals of the tournament. Even though it was not fancy and flary, I loved it. One of my personal favourites. Jason Dala has had a fantastic tournament as well. But Angola will be without Neblu in goal after his chaotic and crazy red card where he handled the ball. Outside the penalty area, we shall see Angola's backup goalkeeper in between the sticks who didn't concede a goal after coming on against Namibia. That will give him confidence. But then the Nigerians will say, hang on, what about us? Is Nwabali going to be past fit to play this game? Or is Azohu going to be the one playing in goal for Nigeria? With respect to Azohu, he isn't an inexperienced goalkeeper. He's played in big tournament games before, so it's not a bad backup option to have. But Nigeria have looked very solid at the back. In the last three games, I think they kept three clean sheets, including beating Ivory Coast and Cameroon. So you'd expect Nigeria with their African Player of the Year, Ozimen, who's been brilliant, not goals-wise, but his overall play. I think Ozimen's been fantastic. But what did Nigeria do? They had that good free defense, no five-back, three-back, five-back system against Ivory Coast, where they changed it after the first game when they drew to Equatorial Guinea. They did it against Cameroon as well. But against a side like Angola, you expect Nigeria to dominate and not have too many chances coming the other way. So it'll be interesting to see if Pizarro sticks with that back five or if he changes it to be a bit more attacking. But clearly, if it's working for them, even against Angola, he may feel the need to keep it. Unlike with Sanusi on the left and Ola Aina on the right. And then you've got strong defenders in the middle there like Bassi, um, like Truce de Kong, that get the job done. So overall, I think iwobi has been one of the players of the tournament, ozimen has been one of the players of the tournament, and Nigeria will see it as a really good opportunity to make the quarterfinal. So I think Nigeria are going to beat Angola by two goals to nil. Um, on to the next game, DR Congo take on Guinea, and um, they said Algeria were out. The Algerian referee, Gorbao, will be taking charge of this fixture, so a good moment for him. Now, Guinea came out of that group of death with Senegal and Cameroon, they came third. And they're the only team left. Senegal and Cameroon both lost their last 16 game. And of course, Gambia went out in the group phase. Could you believe Guinea are the last men standing from that one? They, who, let's be fair, were supposed to be hosting the next AFCON. Of course, it got taken off of them. Um, we're buzzing about this and really, really happy with the way their tournament's gone because they started off in the competition with a draw against Cameroon. And then 
they beat Gambia when they should have probably beaten them by more than one, and then they lost to Senegal. Um, but you know, most teams really would usually lose to Senegal. And then that last minute header from Mohamed Bayo, right at the end, literally the last kick in Abidjan against the stellar Equatorial Guinea. What a moment to beat them. And of course, we still haven't really seen Jirassi. We have we've only really seen him coming off the bench. This is one of the top scorers in Europe this season in the Bundesliga. So what a player to be able to bring back in. But 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 DR Congo, despite the fact that they haven't won a game, they drew all three group games and then they drew to Egypt and won on penalties. And that even that went to, to Gabaskian and Passi. I think it's criminal that DR Congo haven't won a game. I think they've played some of the best football in this tournament. They should have been in Morocco if Bakombu could hit the target from a penalty spot. They should have been in Morocco. They outplayed Morocco after that first 20 minutes. They should have been in Zambia. We're one moment of madness again where Mpasse comes steaming out and Zambia scored literally the only shot they had in that game. They should have beaten Zambia. They blit Zambia. And in Tanzania, I think Congo didn't need to get out of first gear because they knew they were going to be through regardless. The Egypt game, they went 1-0 up. And then to me, it's still a bit of a ghost penalty. There's never a pen for me on Hegazi, but it is what it is. They won regardless. So they're unfortunate. But if DR Congo are saving the wins for this stage of the tournament, I don't think any Congolese people will be too disappointed about that. I think DR Congo are going to win this, but they have to get the team selection right. They have to get it right. Um, Banza is crying out for a start. Crying out for a start. We've seen they've got squad players that can do a job. You see Dean Garner come on. He done well. He did a great for a fearless penalty down the middle that could have gone really wrong. Um, Banza we need to see from the start. Back on Boo Hall at about 50, 55 minutes. Has he got the legs to start against Guinea? Let's see. But certainly, Congo have looked very good in this competition. And I think they're going to beat Guinea by two goals to one. So I've got Nigeria and DR Congo making the semi-finals um, from those two fixtures. And then, of course, you've also got South Africa against Cape Verde and even the most die-hard South Africans and the most die-hard Cape Verdeans wouldn't have said it would have been South Africa against Cape Verde in the quarterfinals. Cape Verde winners of a group with Egypt and Ghana, drew to Egypt, beat Ghana and beat Mauritania late on as well. Wow, what a chance for both these teams. South Africa will be thinking, what a chance to make the semis. Cape Verde will be thinking, what a chance to make the semis. Are Cape Verde running out of steam? They went two wins out of two. Then they drew to Egypt where they made a few changes and then they really got a bit fortunate that Mauritania messed up at the back to, uh, to give the late penalty for Ryan Mendes. But South Africa lost to Mali and one of the best team performances in the competition so far was the way South Africa battered Namibia 4-0. And let's be fair, it should have been more than four. And South Africa could have easily won the first game if things went their way because Percy Tao's penalty landed in Joburg when he skied it. If, if Percy Tao scores that penalty against Mali, who knows? where South Africa would have ended up by full time, but it doesn't matter. They came second, a very respectable second. They blitzed Namibia. They kept Tunisia quiet, the Tunisia that apparently beat France and the Tunisia that had to beat South Africa. They couldn't break down South Africa. That keeper and with Ron Wayne Williams and that defence, they all know each other from sundowns. It's an absolute unit and that is showing in this competition. And I think the fact that they, for me, they've effectively knocked out Tunisia and Morocco. Now you're asking them to knock out Cape Verde for a semi-final. I fully expect South Africa to get this job done. I think we're starting to see the best of Percy Tao, the best of evidence. There's, and remember, South Africa are without Lyle Foster, who opted to stay um, with Burnley. He had a lot of mental health issues at the time. This South Africa team have got more in them. And they let Morocco have the ball in the last game. And they still scored twice. And they should have had a penalty. So we've seen them score four when they dominate the ball. I think this will be like the South Africa game against Namibia, where the South Africans will dominate the ball. And with that, they will score goals if they take shots at goal, because Vozinha has got away with it in the Cape Verde goal. He's got away with it. So I think South Africa will beat Cape Verde by a goal to nil, and they'll go to the semi-finals. And of course, you've got the other semi-finals. Again, you wouldn't really have predicted these, but maybe this one, you maybe would have said that Ivory Coast Mali would have been a semi-final, especially if you would have said, okay, well, Ivory Coast is going to win their group and Mali are going to win their group. Ultimately, Ivory Coast didn't, but here we are. It's a fixture you'd expect, and the bounce Cote d'Ivoire have got after changing the coach to the assistant, making big changes, bringing in Seri in the midfield. They dropped Kessier, but he still came on and was the decisive man. Um, Sebastian Haller and Adingra, as the tournament goes on, will return to more and more full fitness. I still think Sebastian Haller 
has a huge say in this tournament. He's been there, not started yet. He's got to make a, an impact, of course, in the penalty shootout he was involved. Haller is going to have a say in this game. Haller is going to have a say in this game, but it will not be easy. Ivory Coast have got the fans back on side. They've beaten the holders. But who's to say if they can do that, that no one can beat Cote d'Ivoire? I mean, literally, they've lost two games. They've lost to Nigeria and they lost to Equatorial Guinea. Not just lost, battered them 4-0. So anything can happen. We'll see what lineup Cote d'Ivoire do. I still think they don't know what their best front three is. Is Adingra and Halle going to get thrown in? Is Pepe going to be benched? Is Crasso and Canade going to play? We'll have to wait and see. But Mali are not going to give this up without a fight. They're unbeaten, whereas Ivory Coast are not. Sunioka, I think, has got three goals in this tournament. Mali have looked good, even without Basuma starting in the starting 11. Um, the central defender, Nia Kate from Braga, has made a huge difference to, to Mali at the back for me. But have they got enough quality to beat Cote d'Ivoire? We know Mali are a really good underrated team. We know they've got really good midfielders like Samaseko and Dieng and, and Diawara and obviously Bissouma. But when it gets to the big game, when they get a big team at the last 16 or a quarter final, can Mali finally get over that hurdle? I can't see it at this buoyant Cote d'Ivoire. I think Cote d'Ivoire beat Mali 3 2. I think there'll be goals in this one. So I've got semi finalists of Nigeria, South Africa, Cote d'Ivoire, and DR Congo. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Which game are you looking forward to the most? And I'll see you next time.